GM friends, and thanks for tuning in to DeFi Logic's TA Tuesday live in our Discord server at 10 a.m. Mountain Time every single week. We have a partnership with Blowfin, and our ETH algorithm is live on the Ashbit marketplace. The links are in the video description below. Join our server to learn more. In today's community call, we will review charts for Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, Render, Worldcoin, and RLC. For legacy markets, S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, US dollar, US 10-year bonds, and finally, gold. And with that, we will start with Eddie. All right, here we go. Good morning. Let's see what we can run into. I might want to just peek at one chart really quick other than this one. So how these blue lines on Bitcoin, honestly, it's a weird spot for the way I trade because I like to use Bitcoin as my map, but it's not acting as one right now. So this is a bearish retest. I was originally shorting this and looking to get long right around this region. I closed it basically break even because it's just a weird market. I don't really know what the hell Bitcoin wants to do. We have the boomers selling the bottom of their ETFs and buying the tops of their ETFs. So it's weird watching this price action of a bunch of morons because this is like their first cycle, right? I remember back before the ETF got approved, I was like, it'd be so great if it approves at the top and then we shake them out and, and we've done that and we, we keep doing that like this bottom candle here was such a huge outflow day and then earlier this week or last week recently in these candles like they've been buying and it's really making the price action really hard to read so i wanted to take a peek at coin dominance i don't use this a lot but basically the premise of bitcoin dominance is if bitcoin dominance is going up then the market's going to do what bitcoin does and if it's going down it won't care as much what it does and it's just a slow grind up so sticking to paying attention to mostly the bitcoin is good it looks like it might want to reclaim here maybe if we can get some price action above it it'll pump and at that point as long as bitcoin's going up everything else will go up and if bitcoin's going down everything else will go down harder if this is going up so i'm just keeping an eye on it it formed like one of these wedge things which is a bullish pattern and it's breaking out and retesting it so we'll see got above the 50 hours high in the daily retested it so Bitcoin dominance looks bullish, therefore I should probably continue to pay attention to Bitcoin. It's just frustrating having all this money coming in and they're acting like this is their first cycle. It's obviously it is. It's just making things really interesting and, and really hard to read. I posted this a while ago on Twitter, but it just looks like manipulation to me. And war news, so pretty test book manipulation. I think that it's probably a pretty decent spot to buy spot Ethereum if you don't have it, because after Initial accumulation, manipulation, you usually get expansion, right? So something like that is very plausible. And then on the higher time frame, it would probably be given some like weekly or monthly dibs to be the top, which would make a lot of sense too, right? So Spot Ethereum is a pretty decent play right now. I believe there's a discount on Spot Ethereum on one of the ETFs right now. So if anyone else has further knowledge on that, maybe they can speak on it, but probably not a bad idea to buy the Spot ETF discounted. I don't know if it's like the Barry one or the BlackRock one, but I swear I saw that one of them's on a discount right now. So that's really all I have for Ethereum is buy spot, buy the ETF discounted rate, hold it for higher. Nothing actionable intraday. So probably I'm guessing is still stronger than Ethereum. This is a weird cycle because we've always had Ethereum in the past kind of indicating for altcoin strength. And I've been saying it over half a year, I feel like on these streams, that I don't think that's really the indicator anymore. I think it's Solana. And even still today, like even if we looked at Sol, I imagine that this is stronger still. Sol pretty dominant. Anyways, it just makes things difficult for people who like to use old patterns because the old signals just aren't there anymore. But this is looking pretty, I don't know, it's looking the same as Ethereum to me. Like it's just in a re-accumulation stage or like I called it before, manipulation stage. It's just getting ready for a markup. So I believe we're probably around half time. Buy spot, pretty easy to do. You just buy some and wait. I imagine it goes higher than that, honestly. I'm not like a huge price prediction person, but this is just like the pattern I'm drawing. It's not my target. If I had to really give a target, I feel like 420 Solana makes a lot of sense. So I'd probably be looking to sell around there, honestly. Pretty decent move if you buy spot. Full on chain is still probably your best bet. All right, RNDR. So NVIDIA earnings, I think it's the 22nd. I was hoping for a steeper pullback for that, but I think that this was it right here. It, kind of, it gave a pretty good reclaim. I was hoping these lows would get ran again, but it seems to be not the case. That kind of seems like the lows in. I think at this point, you're probably not gonna get blessed with the big pullback again, because we just had them last week. So I'd probably be looking for some bullish price action to occur into here. Last night, I was hoping for a sweep of this low. Really, it's the, these two levels here. 
just like both these wicks. But I don't know if I'm going to get so lucky anymore. So really at this point, I'm just going to be watching for something like this. If they can sweep this low, that'll be enough for me to like gin like half to a third. If it can come all the way down here, I'll get fully in. And basically, I just want this to happen for new highs. But this is one of the best looking charts right now on the market is RNDR. Looks really good. What I'm looking for with it. RLC has just been straight juice too. So all these coins have just been running really hard. So this was the old pullback plan. It filled perfectly. I removed my bids before it got here though because I got impatient, which is too bad because I would get an average entry around there and be sitting pretty right now. I'm not in. So exact same right. I probably don't need to draw it at this point. Maybe some reclaims at this level. The same idea as far as pull back into this region. The same kind of ideas with your profit taking too. Something like this, I think, makes a lot of sense. So you have two triggers again. I think that's it. Pretty short and sweet to the point. All the charts look the exact same. AI coins look pretty strong. I think it's just because people are front running the NVIDIA news. All right, cool. Thanks, Eddie. And now we will move on to legacy markets with GeForce. Hey, thanks, Pepe. So I'm going to do things in reverse today. I'm going to first talk about stagflation. And I did a write-up on a Stock Saturday this last Saturday about stagflation. And a lot of people don't know about it because we haven't had it in the United States for the last 50 years. So the last time we've had it, it was during the 70s. And basically the definition of stagflation in economics is recession-inflation. This is when the inflation rate is high or is increasing, which we have right now. Economic growth rate slows, which we're starting to see that with the unemployment report last Friday, that it, unemployment actually went up from 3.8 to 3.9. And that's the last one, which unemployment remains steadily high. So we're in a process right now where economic growth is slowing and unemployment is starting to go up a little bit. The reason why this is starting to come around the last two weeks in economic news is that in the 70s, it was really bad. The United States couldn't get out of basically the vicious circle of no growth and high unemployment. And so that's why governments and especially the United States just does not want that to ever happen again, ever. So I usually do the U.S. 10-year yield last, but I'm going to do it right now at the beginning. So we had a four-year chart going back to 2020. So we're right here in, in 2020, and you have the 10-year interest rate or the 10-year yield at 0.445%, okay? It's not even 1%. And so the past four years, you can see we've just been going up. And right now, we're looking at it's 4.43. So interest rates are going up. That's part of the definition of stagflation. And we're looking at it and just going higher. I keep stating that, especially 30-year bonds have a 30-year cycle. And we were back at 0% or zero prime rate several years ago. So there's only one direction for yields on the bonds and that's to go up. Therefore, there's only one direction for inflation to do and that's to go up as well. So everybody looks at, do we have inflation? And the average American looks at it, okay, is my mortgage rate higher? And now mortgage rates are going around 7% and will go probably to 10%, which will be a total debacle. And then gas prices and gas prices are still high. I mean, my area, they're still at $5.35 a gallon. So that's, I consider high. Anyway, the whole Biden administration, this is a four years of Biden administration and his chief economic advisor doesn't understand basic economics. He's just saying that uh, let's just print more money. And that's what Chairman Powell has an issue with is that he's dealing with that mentality in the Biden administration, just print more money. and. Powell is just pausing on interest rates. So the problem with him pausing on interest rate, it's like taking antibiotics on an infection you have. If you don't take the full cycle of antibiotics, the infection is going to remain and the fever is going to remain. By Powell pausing, he's not doing the full round of antibiotics and I think we're just going to have a continued inflation going on. Moving on to gold, I'm going to look at this four-year chart on gold as well. So if you look in 2020, gold is around 1500 and now we're at 2313 and it did pop up to around 24. So gold is just going up, interest rates are going up and that is the cycle we're in. I, I can't put it any other way, it's just the cycle we're in. All right, so we'll move to the uh, S&P 500. We'll get back into what we do usually at the beginning and I'll move it back to a daily chart here. Everybody knows I like to do daily charts. 
The daily chart is moving around a little bit. It's going up higher. We're getting back into a session where everybody's thinking we're going to have an interest rate cut by the end of this year. And I think that is not going to happen. You can see that we've moved up the last couple of days and it's probably going to try and touch another high because everybody's on this high that we're going to have uh, interest rate cuts in September. So if we do have interest rate cuts in September, obviously that's right before the election and everybody's going to be going, oh, stock market's high, everything's good, we're happy, economy's not as bad as the naysayers are saying. But then in 2025, we're going to have some major issues on that. So you can see that we had a low here on the S&P back in April 19th and we just moved up from there. Moving on to the Dow Jones, this one's actually a little bit better to track. It's actually leading the other two markets. It usually lags, but now it's leading. So like Eddie said, a Bitcoin usually leads. S&P usually leads in the legacy markets and then NASDAQ and then the Dow Jones, but now it's reversed. So the Dow Jones is already at the upper 2x band today. It tagged it and it, it fell back. So that's why I'm looking for the other two markets to tag that upper 2x band right there. The dollar index will be last. And the good news for crypto is that the dollar index has gone down. You can see it tried to make a double top. And this is a double top, but not quite. Strict definition wise, it is, but it looks sloppy on the chart. And then it's dropped back down below the standard deviation line. And then it's also almost tagged at the lower 2x band and it's working its way up. So that's good news for crypto that things have been going down on the, the dollar index. Okay. Hopefully you guys got some good information out of that and I'll turn it over to Pepe. We certainly did. And that is it for this week. Remember our Bitcoin and Doge trading algos are currently in beta testing on Astrobit and our ETH strategy is now available on the marketplace over on Astrobit. If you'd like to learn more, join our server or click the links below. GN friends. Join us next week in Discord for TA Tuesday at DeFiLogic.com.